Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you for subscribing. Uh, I have a, a variety of ways you can subscribe online. You can subscribe directly to an Og Vorbis MP3 or uh, video feed directly from our website. You can also subscribe from YouTube, Dailymotion, Blip.tv. There's a variety of places online uh, you can find <laughs> the Geekinator. And um, please do shoot me an email, geekinator at quickstruff.com. If there are any uh, links or anything that you want to bring to my attention, definitely send them over and they just might make it here on the show. With that, let's go ahead and get into uh, some of the cool stuff that I found online. There's been a lot of uh, NSA news with Edward Snowden and the PRISM program and just, you know, general cybersecurity type stuff going on. And uh, over at The Verge, I ran across this article. It's called the NSA. There's an NSA memo uh, says that the agency monitors 1.6% of all Internet traffic. 1.6%. To me, that sounds like, oh, I don't know, 1.6% too much. How about that? I think that's 1.6 too much traffic. What do you think? Amid a global furor over U.S. data collection policies, the Obama administration released two documents describing the scope of what it claims is the legal justification for its monitoring of telephone metadata and Internet browsing. The documents portray the National Security Agency's surveillance activities as more limited than recent published reports have made them out to be. 1.6% is a lot. Even though it may be more limited, that's still way too much traffic. Anyway, uh, check the article out. It's a doozy. Over at Hack a Day, tiny Wi Fi modules again. That's right. The CC3000 is a tiny single chip component that adds all the necessary hardware, say for a chip antenna and software, to get even the most minimal microcontrollers onto a Wi Fi network. It was announced early this year, but making proper breakout boards takes time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, you can now get these CC3000 modules from Adafruit, and uh, it looks pretty cool. I haven't checked, I haven't looked closely at this, but it seems that you should be able to uh, fairly easily um, get even something as simple as an Arduino uh, to uh, get on Wi-Fi. So pretty awesome, definitely. If you're looking for a Wi-Fi solution for your, for your, uh, embedded microcontroller project that's definitely something to look into at the verge uh the national geographic is using drones and robots to capture stunning images of african lions now they have a series of photos here that are awesome um I, you know th there's no way that <laughs> <laughs> there is no way that a human got this close to take these photos. You know, you can tell this was not taken with a telephoto lens. The depth of just based on the depth of field of these photos, really, really, really great. Definitely check this out. Um, I just, I, you know, I, th these are all photos that I can use, you know, that I would totally download and use as wallpaper anytime. From makezine.com, 12 surprising details about Lego Mindstorms EV3. What? Lego? That's right. Yesterday, I unboxed the new, this is the story, John Beichtal. I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, so I'm sorry if I completely slaughtered it there. Uh, yesterday, I unboxed, you can send me an email and tell me how to pronounce it if you're watching or listening. 
Uh, yesterday, I unboxed the new LEGO Mindstorms EV3 set, and even before powering on the microcontroller brick, I'd noticed a number of interesting changes, both great and unfortunate, as compared with the previous set called the LEGO Mindstorms NXT 2.0. Up to that point, I'd assume the mix of technique beams and pegs were more or less the same, but that was the microcontroller brick and programming environment had been upgraded. Oh, and that it was the microcontroller brick and programming environment that had been upgraded. Well, apparently not. So pretty interesting. Definitely uh, take a look. Um, the EV, so the NXT had around 80 straight technique beams. The EV3 has fewer than 60. That's kind of sad. Uh, the NXT, you know, basically goes through, he goes through a list of stuff. Uh, so you may be coming up a little short on some of your things. Um, if you get the uh, EV3 plan to buy extra parts, I guess. Uh, the next thing that I found online, I'm going to point this out simply because it's dangerous to text and drive. Um, in Arizona, they discourage it, but it's not really illegal. I used to, I'm a Phoenix native. I used to live in Arizona up until about a year and a half ago or so. Um, and over here on The Verge, uh, there's a video that Warner Herzog has, um, it's a documentary that he's, produced for, for texting and on texting and driving and it's really hard to watch um but i think necessary to watch because all too often i cannot tell you how many times i'm driving on the road and i see some yahoo either talking on the phone or looking down on his phone texting while he's driving and you know i don't know about you guys but i find driving in California, particularly the Bay Area, quite a bit more difficult than driving in metropolitan area Phoenix for a couple of reasons. Number one, the roads for the most part in metropolitan area Phoenix are straight. And metropolitan area Phoenix for the most part is flat. And driving is very easy. It's very easy to stay in your lane. You know, it's not that big of a deal. Here in the Bay Area, the roads are not flat. And they're not really that straight. <laughs> it's really difficult to text and drive without exiting your lane, especially if you're going to do, you know, if you're typing. Um, yeah. So anyway, check it out. Please don't text and drive. It's a huge safety hazard and it's technically illegal here in California. So I'm sure that it's illegal in other states and in other parts of the world. For those of you who have those types of laws, I'm not familiar with those, but uh, don't text and drive. Watch the documentary. If that's if that's not enough to stop you from doing it, then I don't know what is because I saw it and I was like, oh, <laughs> never again. From Geeky Gadgets, PiCast app transforms your Raspberry Pi into Chromecast style device. This I, I believe I covered this on Linux Newslog, if I remember correctly. But I thought for those of you who like watching the Geekinator, this would be an interesting thing to look at. If you have a Raspberry Pi handy and fancy adding a few features similar to that in Google's new Chromecast media streaming device, a new application has been created for the Raspberry Pi called PiCast that offers users an open source solution for the Raspberry Pi $35 mini PC. Watch the video after the jump to learn more about the PiCast project and see it in action. So pretty neat. Definitely check the video out. Uh, from CNETnews.com, Star Trek Tricorder becomes the real McCoy. This is pretty cool. <laughs> I actually like this. Uh, the Scanadu can read all your vitals in 10 seconds, measuring heart rate, temperature, respiratory rate, blood pressure, ECG, and emotional stress. You hold it up to your forehead, and the information is wirelessly transmitted to your smartphone. It works on iOS and Android devices. The founder and CEO, Walter D. Brower, explained the Scanadu Scout is not just for doctors. He's looking to enable patients with an informative, easy-to-use device so that they can play a larger role in the healing process. I think this is the coolest thing ever. Definitely check it out. It even looks like a tricorder. That's the cool thing. Well, not really, but you know what I'm talking about. Pretty neat. 
Uh, that will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.